right. Yeah. You saw the camera come out, didn't you? Well, there's your audience out there. You're the star of the show. He doesn't care. Again, he never cares. I do. Hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas. I am on the hideous side of the house, the northeast side where the light is terrible. I can't see this, so if the light is bad when I edit it, I apologize in advance. Um, I'm going to cover a few things today and start a series on building the mechanical room. And so let me give you a little background on this mechanical room and why we've got to do it. And again, if the light is terrible, I do apologize. It will get better a little later into the video. You know, Debbie and I really started this journey about 2000. Uh, I started documenting it in 01. And I started documenting in 01 for what I thought was a really good reason. I had no idea how long it was going to take to finish this. Uh, or I probably would have started with a different idea in mind. The original idea was in 01, 02, we all remember that aside from the fact that we had, you know, the issues with the World Trade Center and invading two sovereign countries and some other problems that arose financially with the, um, the housing bubble bursting and our 401ks going under, leaving out any of the politics involved in that, the fact of the matter was a lot of baby boomers, I would have to say the middle bubble, not the ones on this end and not the ones on that end, but the middle bubble, lost most of their retirement. Whether it was the company took it away or whether they had it in a 401k that bottomed out and maybe has now come back, I had thought that if I started documenting this journey and showing you how you could get in shape and extend your life and live in a way that was a lot less expensive to live than the way we were all indoctrinated to live from the 40s, 50s, and 60s forward, that maybe I could help baby boomers that had lost their fannies to live with dignity um, in their old age. So I started the journey then, figuring, oh, you know, two or three years. Well, here I sit now, 16 years later, and I'm still working on the place. My baby boomer friends have all moved up to being anywhere from, uh, well, Debbie's age, which is 57, up to, um, you know, pushing 80. And, hey, frankly, a lot of you haven't got the energy to do this, and you're just kind of, well, this is the way it is, and I, I get that. So now we kind of push the focus now to what I would call the millennials, the kids that have grown up in this society where we've been dumbing down America and where we're, we've become a consumer-oriented uh, country instead of a manufacturing-oriented country. So while I'll direct it at the people that are still baby boomers that have got the energy and the desire, it's also directed at anyone who doesn't like exactly the way society is forcing you to build. Now, you needed that intro in order to understand why we're here first of all but also that intro helps you to understand why I built this place the way I did and why I'm having certain specific problems I've been always somebody that'll deal with my failures as well as my um, successes we're going to be talking in this video series here uh, which I'm not going to do vlogs while I do this video series but we're going to be talking in this video series about one of my failures, why it came about, and why it's relevant to those of you that want to go ahead and try to live like this that don't have even the background that I have, which isn't extensive, but how we can go ahead and do it. So here's what we're doing. The video series, this is part one of the mechanical room build. Now, when we first got here, uh, and again, this is an interesting story, but we had been flooded out repeatedly not our fault, but fled out repeatedly in North Florida and essentially didn't have much money. Debbie's parents gave us money. They gave us a travel trailer, and I was lucky enough to get some money from a lawsuit because of the flooding, but it wasn't much money to get us here. So bottom line, we, end, we ended up leaving Florida with all our stuff and about $10,000 to come here. Ten grand, even back in, uh, 09, in, in uh, 10, 2010, doesn't go very far. So I built this place behind me. This is 32 feet by 16 feet. I built it in seven days on my own with recycled material that I brought from uh, Florida. The two by fours and two by sixes in the house, the two by sixes came from my chicken coops at my house, my, our, our ranch in Florida. And the two by fours came from a chicken house that had failed. Tyson pulled the um, contract on the guy and he tore his chicken houses down. I bought the, uh, the, the two by fours. The OSB, I bought most of it. Some of it was donated, but 
in essence, it was a recycled building. Because of that, I didn't do things the way they should be done from the very beginning. And the one we're going to deal with in the mechanical room is the water system. Now, I haven't talked much about our water system because our water system has been kind of a temporary, uh, tossed together kind of a mess. Well, that mess bit me in the fanny. Today is, I'm not sure what it is. It's Saturday. Is it the 6th? the 6th or the 5th of January of, uh, of 2018. But anyway, what I did was I've got the tanks that have been pictured before. They're out of frame right now. And the water line essentially sits on the ground and comes through here. Now that's where all these bottles are on the ground right now and this mounded dirt is covering the water line because we got bit in the fanny last week by the cold uh, snap that came in. I had the whole system set up. I did a video about me blowing out the system but we blew the system out, but the water pump, which sat right here out in the cold, the water pump itself, I didn't blow out, I wasn't able to blow the water out of a little section right there by the main bearing. And now that main bearing is non-replaceable, and that little bit of water froze, expanded, and popped the main, um, the main bearing out, so it leaks like a sieve and there's nothing I can do about it. We're going to save that motor and recycle that motor into a wood lathe later on. But it leaves me without a water pump. It's no sweat, Debbie and I know how to deal with that, but since I have to repair that, since the cold is here and as man-made climate disruption continues to upset the thermohaline cycle in the North Atlantic, we are going to get more weather extremes. So for a few more years we're going to get these horrible cold blasts. I need to protect this place from Arctic cold a couple times a year. So we have to take the water lines that come from our tanks, get them far enough underground that they won't freeze again, the valving so it won't freeze. I have to bring the pump inside a mechanical room. I have to have my filters and my bladder tanks set up properly. And since I'm doing all of that, the mechanical room also has got to have the hot water tanks in here. And I had to devise a hot water heating system that would work. And I also have right here the rocket stove, hot wa uh, rocket stove thermal mass hot water heater that was supposed to heat up the water to heat our to heat the building in the winter time. So we're going to combine all of that stuff up in this video in the mechanical room and show you how to do it right because I did it wrong and I probably did it the way a lot of you would have done it and a lot of folks out here do have done it by just sticking everything out and then when it gets cold. They either pray it doesn't freeze or they try to empty the lines and invariably you miss one line or one um, bearing like I did. So we are going to get started uh, on getting the mechanical room done and let me um, take a break and I'm going to explain to you where we start and then I'm going to start. So I've got you set up so you can see over here by the tank. This window is a defective window that uh, we have to, I have to have some help to move to the back. But right here where this mound is, is where my valve is coming out of this tank. This is the main tank. The, the uh, plumbing for the other two tanks comes around the corner here. And again, when I have a total of five tanks in the back, it'll also just come through here. So this has to be redone. I had bought a valve that I didn't realize when I bought it was faulty. After I installed it and had 3,000 gallons of water in the tank, I realized I had a faulty valve. So I have to replace that valve, but it's okay because I have to replace the water all the way coming in. I'll skip you the mechanicals of how, how I'm going to plumb it, but I am going to dig a trench right along pretty much where you're sitting, bring that trench into the mechanical room where the plumbing, where the pump will be along with all the other things. Uh, we're going to put the wall of the mechanical room, again, right where you are in line here, but you're also behind you in line with the chimney of the uh, rocket stove. Over here, these two pipes, including the crookedy one, not sure you can see them, but these two pipes, one of them because he carries the hot water to the guest bathroom. The other one is a bigger line that carries the hot water for the HVAC, the heating system, to the uh, to zone one, or this is actually zone two of the house, which is the guest wing and a couple other things. Uh, those have to be buried in the concrete of the footing. I have to create a footing all the way around the mechanical room. The mechanical room is going to be about, um, I believe it's 8 feet by um, 10 feet, might be 8 by 12. I'm going to measure it off in a minute. And because, as you can see on this wall, we already started doing a bottle wall on this side of the house, we're going to finish the bottle wall veneer 
on the outside of the house here so we're going to veneer it now coming in in a few days i've got two girls coming in that wanted to specifically said yeah we'll we're happy to do um uh, masonry work got another girl that i haven't heard back from that wanted to come in i have a fellow oh i think he said he was 50 I think he said he was 57 that's coming in that wants to help and buy himself some property and kind of use our place as a base. So with those four people, we should get the mechanical room done pretty quickly during the month of January. So I'm going to start right now by digging out my footing, getting all the dirt moved back so I can um, mix the concrete. I'll come back when I've got the footing all dug out. We have to move these bottles. Debbie's coming out as soon as the sun hits this side of the house because it is chilly. For, tech, for West Texas standards, it's 50 degrees right now, but over here, I'll bet you it's 42 or 43. It's chilly. So we'll get that footing done and show you the footing um, when I'm ready to pour it. Well, as you can see, I've got the footing poured here, and I'm waiting for it to set up and cure so I can break the forms down. That little piece over here yet that I have to pour, that I'll do tomorrow. But uh, for now, I'm ready to begin the construction on veneering this wall and building the, um, the, the mechanical room. I have some other things that I do have to do here to get the mechanical room ready. Uh, one of the most important ones uh, is going to be moving both of our hot water heaters out into the mechanical room. Uh, and pouring a concrete slab. Actually, we'll do the slab and move the heaters, obviously. Uh, and then I'll do a separate video about how I uh, do the final plumbing on the whole mechanical room, because that's going to be of interest to anyone that wants to build an off-grid system like ours. Uh, so we'll do a separate video on that. And part two will come up when the uh, when my two ladies arrive to, to learn how to do uh, masonry, which will be in a couple of days. And we'll get part two going as the wall goes up. So until then, it's uh, Robert Earl and Cascade the Wonder Dog wandering off over there. Uh, telling you from uh, the Eco Ranch in far west Texas, see you later.